Let's look at something really useful for graph sketching. Say you know how to sketch fx and gx is equal to fx. So this is not an issue, you just sketch fx. Now what happens if gx is equal to fx plus some number? Now this is easy. If it is plus some number, you just shift the entire graph up by that number. We'll look at some examples later. We'll look at some examples later to see how we can make use of this. Now if it is minus, then you shift it down. So the shape remains the same, whether or not you shift the graph up or down. You know, for example, if your graph looks like that, you shift the whole thing up by A. If it is minus A, you shift this graph down. Now what happens if you are asked to sketch GX equals to F x plus or minus a instead. Now for this case, you have to shift either left or right. If it is plus, you shift to the left. If it is negative, you will shift to the right. I'm not trying to prove to you how, how this works, but it is really not that difficult. To get some intuition, just throw in some x values and you can see that you know how the graph moves is really quite natural. But what I'm giving you now is a quick hack for you to remember. So you can always sketch these graphs very fast. So if you have a constant in front of your function, so what it means is it becomes steeper. Okay, so if you are trying to plot an x square graph, if you multiply by a number that is bigger than 1, then it will become steeper. If you multiply by a number that is less than 1, like half, then it becomes gentler. So what happens if there is a minus sign in front of your function? So if the minus sign is here, it means that you have to have a mirror image about the x-axis. So if your graph is here, then if you add in the minus sign, you will have to redraw it such that it is here. Now if your minus sign is inside the brackets, so you are asked to plot this, then you are supposed to flip about the y-axis. So if fx is something like that, then your gx will be something like this. So these are some common rules that if you remember, you can plot almost anything. Let us look at some concrete examples. Okay, say you want to plot this fx is equal to 3x minus 4 squared plus 2. So you start off with the x squared graph. This is the x squared graph. So what do you do? You want to add 2. If I add 2, the graph shifts upwards. You want to shift 4 points to the right. And then now the graph becomes steeper. So if you combine everything, it will be plus 2, shifts 4 points to the right. Here, this is the 4 points. This is the plus 2. And then the graph is steeper. So this is the minimum point. So your graph will look something like this. What about this? Say fx is equal to square root of x minus 1. So to begin, you will have to know how to plot the graph for square root of x. Now this is square root of x. And it is really not that hard to see how this works. Your graph will never be negative. It will never go to the negative side because you can't have a negative value inside the square root. So x will be will start from 0. And when x is 0, y will be 0. And as x increases, y increases. It's just that the square root will affect larger numbers more than smaller numbers. For example, square root of 100 is 10, square root of 4 is 2. 
Now, from 4 to 2, it drops by half. But from 100 to 10, it drops by a whooping 90%. So as the number increases, it actually the square root actually acts on more. So now if we have our square root of x graph, minus 1 will just shift by one point. So 1, and it will be something like this. It will increase in the same way, but it will get closer and closer to the same as the square root of x. For example, square root of 100 and square root of 101 is almost the same value. Another example, f x equals to x over x minus 1. Now this is a problem. Um, we don't really know how to draw this. So we need to look for a function that we actually know how to draw. So if I were to simplify this fraction to be x minus 1 plus 1, this is a common trick in Medimed in algebra where you can split up the fractions. So if I split this out, I'll have x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. This will give me 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. Now I can try to plot this because I know how to plot this graph, fx equals to 1 over x. This looks like this. You have two disjoint graphs and as it increases, it will never reach the x-axis. So approaching this side, this is an asymptote where it becomes larger and larger but you never hit the y-axis. So same thing for the other side. So now I have this. I can try to plot using this information. So let's do it. I will plot it here. Now first of all, I know that the graph plus 1, so the whole graph will shift upwards. And then there is an x minus 1 here, so the graph will shift to the right. It will shift upwards by 1, and it will shift to the right. So something like this. 